It's a big day here at Chrome Unboxed in the studio, in the office. We have our hands on the first Tiger Lake 11th gen Intel CPU powered Chromebook in the Asus Chromebook CX5. It's a 15.6 inch Chromebook, a Core i3, again, 11th gen Core i3, eight gigs of RAM, 128 gigs of internal storage. We're excited to finally start testing and seeing what Tiger Lake processors will do with Chrome OS. And so let's just jump in the box. Today's video is brought to you by our awesome and growing Patreon community. Over there, we offer things like behind the scenes footage, early access content, access to our private Discord channel, and an ad-free experience over at chromeunbox.com, both on the desktop and mobile versions of our website. If you'd like to learn more, just head over to patreon.com forward slash chromeunboxed. All right, so let's get in this box. Uh, we won't spend a lot of time on the outside of this. Asus's boxes are a little nicer than most Chromebook boxes. There's a nice little hinge and stuff going on here, um, but it's just a cardboard box at the end of the day. So let me get that thing open and we'll just move the Chromebook over here for right now. Uh, inside here, there's the you know, general paperwork and the charger is a, a pretty cool little brick. Uh, I like these. They're easier to stow in a bag, stuff like that. They do take a little bit more room on your power surge, which is unfortunate. They do, they hawk space on a wall mount, a uh, wall bracket kind of thing too, which is again, unfortunate, but uh, it's a lot more handy to carry this than the big brick and then the extended cable and all that stuff that you get in older laptops. So um, I'm glad they included that. It feels like a nice little inclusion there. And I do want to, tell you the exact number of the processor here. So this is a Core i3. It's a dual core Core i3. It is the uh, 11th gen i3 1115G4. The reason that's important um, isn't so much that you know the exact processor number here. It's to know that it's dual core. And as I talk about this Chromebook and what it's capable of, that's important to note because there are quad core versions of this thing coming in the Core i5 and i7. And the processors that it's going against when we start talking about some benchmark things, because yeah, we've opened it up and, and ran a couple tests on it real quick. The, the, the processors it's going up against are quad core i5s and i7s. And flat out, I'll tell you right now, this thing is absolutely smoking those other, uh, the, those other Chromebooks. It is ridiculously fast, uh, way faster than I would have expected. Matter of fact, we do this a lot whenever we, uh, we get a new Chromebook in, we'll, we'll open it up and start running uh, benchmarks on it and just kind of go, hey, what do you got? What do you got? And we'll try to guess real quick. We so far underestimated this thing. Matter of fact, we were we were guessing, uh, I guessed, I wanna say 42,500 or something like that on this thing to get in Octane, which yes, I know is a retired benchmark, but we still go back to it along with other benchmarks. This thing got somewhere around 58, 57,000 on Octane. And for reference, I don't know of a Chromebook that's ever broken 50,000, ever. N even the fastest, most uh, elaborate Chromebook setups Chrome boxes, all that stuff. Nothing I know of has cracked 50,000. And this way cracked 50,000. 50, I think 57, eight, uh, 57,800 is the, the biggest score that we got. And so uh, don't worry about performance here on Chromebooks with 11th gen processors. They're gonna be fast because this is the dual core i3 version. Again, it's paired up with eight gigs of RAM, 128 gigs of NVMe storage. And uh, we do need to talk about the outside of this thing because it's gorgeous. It is absolutely gorgeous. It's an aluminum kind of treated material on the outside. So it's like a soft touch, but just super white and nice, just hard edges. I really like the way this thing's put together. The bottom is completely plastic, uh, but doesn't feel like it. The whole thing is, is very rigid uh, across the bottom. You can see there are uh, ports for fans. This thing does have a fan. Uh, there are speaker grills here. We'll talk about that in just a minute. And again, even though it's plastic, it, it's treated in the same way. So at first it took me a minute to figure out that this was actually plastic on the bottom. Cause again, it's rigid and it, it just has the same texture feel as the lid. And so the whole thing just comes together and looks really cool in this white finish. Uh, I, I just love, I absolutely love the way this thing looks. It's a little heavy. Uh, we haven't weighed it or anything like that yet, but um, you know, it's not going to be a light Chromebook. It's a 15.6 inch device. But uh, as far as port selections, we've got a USB A and C on this side, volume rocker, power, microphone, uh, headphone, microphone jack, uh, full size HDMI, which is always nice to have. Uh, the USB Type-C and an SD card, micro SD card slot around the back, some ports for uh, those fans like we were talking about. All right, so that's the outside and everything looks great here. It looks good, it feels really good. So 
checks across the board there. Let's actually crack this thing open. And you get that nice little ergo lift thing. I don't know if that's what Asus calls it. Everybody's kind of got their own name for it. it. It slightly lifts up across the bottom as you open it up. But once you get inside this thing, you're met with an entirely black chassis. And so you've actually got this soft touch. I want to say it's almost like rubberized feeling uh, upper on the bottom half of the chassis. And again, white is white can be on the outside and just this nice matte finish black color on the inside. And it just gives off all these pixel panda uh, vibes. And it, it's always been my favorite of Google's phones when they do the, the black on white color scheme. And this just looks awesome uh, as you kind of flip and you look and it's all white on the outside and you flip it in and it's just got this black internal look to it. It's, it's fantastic. It feels great. The trackpad is nice and wide. It's glass. It's got a great click mechanism. It's nice and quiet. I did have to open this one up and adjust that uh, trackpad though because it, it did what I don't like trackpads to do and it was kind of elevated a little bit. Uh, if you know how to do that, it wasn't a hard adjustment to do. If you get one and you're not satisfied with the way the trackpad is kind of bouncing on there, I would say take it back and go get another one. Hopefully that won't be the, the case across the board with this particular device. Uh, but once I adjusted that down just a little bit, the trackpad's just fantastic feeling. Super smooth, nice and wide. Uh, you've got a numeric keypad over here. You've got backlit keys. Uh, you've got a, a keyboard with the capture key up top. So we've only seen that in the C1030 from HP. So that's a nice addition. I've, I've grown to really love having that, that screenshot button up there, especially with the screenshot tool being so awesome of late. Uh, but overall, again, just super attractive. We've got a 1080p screen here we're going to talk about in a second. Uh, 1920 by 1080 webcam up top. So everything you need here, uh, really great packaging. The thing just looks amazing. Uh, the keyboard is nice and quiet, but very, very clicky. Like I just, I haven't sat and typed a lot on this thing yet, but it feels like one I'm gonna really, really enjoy because it just, man, it sounds great. It feels really great. So the combination trackpad, keyboard, really good. Full HD at 16 by nine on a 15.6 inch screen is always kind of uh, a knockout. It works. You don't have to do any scaling, none of that stuff. It looks good the way it is right out of the box. Uh, the only knock I'm gonna have against this display, I think is probably the brightness, but overall, uh, I, 250 nits is not a deal breaker at all. Uh, the Lenovo uh, Chromebook uh, Flex 5 is a 250 nit screen and it's fine. It's just in really, really bright conditions. You're going to run into situations where you might feel like, man, I wish I had a couple more bumps of brightness. It's why I say uh, 300 nit screen should be uh, what we get in every Chromebook in the, the $500 price bracket. And so we can talk about price too while we're here. $569 is what this thing is retailing for. Asus does not put sales on their Chromebooks very often, so I wouldn't expect it's going to drop a bunch. Uh, but like right now under this lighting, a lot of times dim monitors, even if I crank them up, start feeling a little bit dim and they never really rise to the occasion. This one I can tell you, if I turn this around and pointed this at you, would, would kind of blow the shot out. But I'll turn it around anyway, and hopefully we'll, we'll get that uh, lined out and it looks okay on camera. But again, like I said, 16 by 9 feels just perfectly settled in here. 1080p on a 15.6 inch screen feels right. Like it just settles in here just right. I don't have to change any of the scaling. And if you think things are a little bit small on the screen, you've got the pixels to, to bump it up a little bit if you want to. But overall, I think the screen is gonna be good. And I, I was worried about the screen on this thing. Uh, I'm not too worried about it anymore after actually having it out and looking at it. The brightness is gonna be sufficient for most people. And again, at this kind of price point, if they bump this thing up to 700 bucks, I don't think that would be acceptable. But as it's going to hover in this $500 type range, I think that's perfectly acceptable. And so now you've got a good screen, very usable, lots of workspace, this awesome looking chassis, a great smooth trackpad, this great keyboard, it's backlit as well. And so if we uh, alt back that up, you can see the backlighting coming on there behind the keys. You got a number pad. I mean, this thing is going to be a productivity workhorse before even talking about what's inside of it. And we get into that Core i3 11th gen processor and it is an absolute monster. We're putting some stuff out on the website, uh, exact benchmarks and all that kind of stuff and comparing that to the 10th gen. And we'll talk about that stuff more in the review. You, you don't need a review though to know this is by far, this is the fastest Chromebook I've ever used. And this is a, this is the low end of the core i uh, processors in the 11th gen. It doesn't have the best GPU of what's going to be coming. So it, it, it's very, very impressive. 
So one final thing I want to point out is the surprise I had when I fired up the speakers on this thing. So give me just a second. Let me pull up something that we won't get in trouble for playing out loud. Okay, we've pulled up some stuff on Epidemic Sound and it's gonna be hard obviously for you to hear this, uh, but if you're listening in earphones, you'll probably get a good sense of how good these speakers are. And if you remember from the beginning, they're, they're, there's a speaker port kind of facing down, but then it kind of angles out as well. So it really does come up off the desk pretty nicely, even for downward firing speakers. But the first thing I played on here, I honestly kind of sat back a little shocked because my expectation for Chromebook speakers is always super low. Uh, and I, I don't think they really touted this too much uh, at having great sound. But yeah, take a listen. So, Again, it's, uh, it's probably very difficult to hear there, but it's very full sounding, it's very loud, and it's just this nice round sound. There's not a bunch and a ton of bass coming out, but for spoken word and general video listening, like this is gonna be very enjoyable to watch a movie on or something like that. So, I mean, I, I, I'm pleasantly surprised all around here. I'm happy that the screen is not a detractor. I'm blown away by the speed of the processor. I'm pleasantly surprised by the quality of the speakers. I'm very surprised. I shouldn't be surprised by Asus's keyboards. Their keyboards have always been good. This is one of the best ones I've felt so far. Uh, the trackpad is great. The, the outside part of this thing looks great. Looks like a million bucks. It's a convertible, so we haven't even done that yet. We'll just flip it up and uh, drop it on the table here. You know, it does all the things a flippable Chromebook should do. And so, I mean, all together, when we start talking about this Chromebook for under $600, I mean, it's a knockout so far. I just had it in for, you know, a couple hours at this point, but it suffices to say I am super impressed with this device. Asus has done a great job here. Uh, Intel obviously has done a great job at putting together a processor that works really well with Chromebooks. Again, I can't speak to how it works with Windows or anything, but as far as a Chromebook is concerned, this is by far the best processors and it's the biggest jump we've seen in a single generation of Intel processors. So if you can't tell, I'm extremely, extremely impressed by this Chromebook so far. Obviously, we're gonna put it through its paces in the review so we can get an idea of battery life. We can get an idea if that screen really is a detractor or not. I don't think it's going to be. Uh, if the keyboard is as good as we think it is, no question on performance, this thing's gonna be an absolute beast. Uh, but overall, I think we already kind of know how that review is going to turn out. This is going to be an impressive Chromebook, and it makes me think that this whole line of Tiger Lake Chromebooks that's coming out this year are all going to be really, really impressive, and it's going to be interesting come later in 2021 when it's time for people to start buying for the holidays and stuff again. The, the competition is going to be fierce, and it's cool that it's starting out on such a high note with this, the CX-5 from ASUS. But guys, that is it for this one. If you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up, head down there and hit that subscribe button, and be sure and ring the notification bell that's right next to that if you'd like to be alerted when we make future videos just like this one. Till next time, we'll see you.